Hello aviators I welcome you on board flight of captain vijay in the series of flights to study meteorology for dgca cpl and atpl examination today we will fly through the topic called fronts before watching this video i suggest you watch the video lesson on air masses for better understanding of this topic fronts is a slightly difficult topic to understand and visualize but we will make all possible efforts to understand what is front cold front warm front stationary front and occluded front so fasten your seat belts as we are ready for take off as i said earlier to understand fronts clearly you need to understand what is an air mass so let's take a quick revision of air mass air masses are large volume of air spread across thousands of kilometer and vertically up to tropopause where the temperature and humidity remains more or less constant at a given height air mass acquire temperature and humidity property from the ground or the sea surface below depending on hot or cold belt or land or sea surface below air masses are classified in six categories arctic polar continental polar maritime tropical continental tropical maritime and equatorial maritime so with this quick recap of air masses we are ready for the topic front fronts occur when two air masses of different temperature interact with each other you can think of different air masses as different armies and front is like a war front where soldiers are fighting each other the border where this fighting is happening is called frontal surface which extends into the atmosphere and where the border between the two air masses touch the ground is called front when two armies fight there would be blood shed in the war zone similarly when two air masses fight weather change like clouding turbulence precipitation change in temperature pressure visibility etc will happen near the frontal surface a front is a surface of interaction between two air masses of different temperature warm air is light and less dense cold air is heavy and dense so when two air masses meet the warmer air will rise over the top of the colder because of difference in density fronts move across earth surface over multiple days the direction of movement is often guided by high winds such as jet streams land forms like mountains can also change the path of a front there are four types of front stationary front warm front cold front and occluded front let us understand them one by one with the help of a scenario where two armies named tropical maritime and polar maritime are deployed on the border here by army we mean air masses tropical maritime air mass would be warm as compared to polar maritime air mass presently there is peace between them so they are maintaining their boundaries and no one is trying to penetrate into each other this situation is possible when winds do not drive them into each other and this is possible when there is geostrophic wind blowing parallel to isobars and blows parallel to the boundary between the air masses but still this is a front means a point where these two air masses are touching each other this type of front would be called stationary front as the name suggest air masses are stationary with respect to each other and no intrusion is happening from any side since stationary fronts mark the boundary between two air masses there will be difference in temperature pressure humidity and wind on opposite sides of this front the weather is often cloudy along a stationary front with likely rain and snow now imagine a scenario when one of the air masses move or penetrate into the other air mass now it is a war between two near the front or border weather will change to indicate that fighting is in progress front is called cold front when cold air mass penetrates into warm air mass since cold air mass is heavier 
it will undercut below the warm air mass cold air is dense and heavy so it has more power so it will always dictate terms with warmer air it will move faster it will create steep grad gradient and it will give thunderstorm and heavy precipitation front is called a warm front when warm air mass penetrates into cold air mass since warm air mass is lighter it will glide over cold air mass so when cold air undercuts warm air it is cold front and when warm air glides over cool air it is warm front so cold or warm front is decided by the fact that which air mass is moving but remember in both cases cold air will be at lower level since it is heavy and warm air would rise since it is light both fronts will cause change of weather but differently larger the difference between their temperature more vigorous will be the weather change now we'll see the characteristics of both the fronts one by one first warm front the speed of warm front is 10 to 15 knots slope is 1 is to 150 that means with every 150 meter of advance warm air will rise by 1 meter frontal slope which is starting on the surface and extending into the atmosphere at an at a slant angle is approximately 600 to 800 kilometers now let's see the characteristics of a cold front the speed of cold front is faster and almost double of warm front that is 20 to 30 knots slope is steep as compared to warm front and the slope is approximately 1 is to 80 front slope is 200 to 300 km smaller as compared to warm front as cold front passes temperature drops suddenly since warm air has been replaced by cold air temperature lapse rate will shoot up resulting in instability in the atmosphere giving heavy rain hail thunderstorm and lightning as i said earlier cold air is heavy and has more power so cold front produces heavy rain and shower with thunderstorm activity winds become gusty and wear with front's passage pressure falls before the front and then pressure rises as front passes remember a rising air will invariably be in a low pressure area after the passage of front temperature is cooler since cold air has replaced the warm air rain stops and the cloud may be stratus or stratocumulus and may be a clear sky with good visibility warm front as the warm from front passes temperature will gradually rise since warm air is replacing cold air in the passage of warm front also the air pressure will fall as i said earlier rising air will be accompanied by low pressure ahead of the front will be stratiform clouding with light precipitation an approach of a warm front can be predicted by high cirrus clouds hundreds of kilometer ahead of the front weather produced by passage of warm front is less vigorous as compared to passage of cold front occluded front sometimes a cold front follows right behind a warm front and as we know that cold front moves faster than warm front almost double the speed so with time it catches up and finally overtakes the warm front which means warm air is forced to leave the lower level of atmosphere and this is what is called occluded front now let us see what is cold occlusion and warm occlusion one by one if overtaking air was cooler as compared to the one being overtaken it is called cold occlusion warm occlusion if overtaking air was warmer as compared to the one being overtaken it is called warm occlusion so cold occlusion or warm occlusion is termed based on the temperature profile 
of the air mass which is overtaking there is often precipitation along occluded front from cb or nimbostratus clouds and after the front passes sky is clear now let's discuss the marking of fronts on synoptic charts warm front is denoted by red semicircle on synoptic charts and cold front is denoted by blue triangle on synoptic charts this semicircle or triangle also indicate the direction of movement of front stationary fronts are depicted on synoptic charts by marking of alternate warm and cold front along a straight or curved line an occluded front is denoted in purple color with alternate semicircle and triangle so hope this video has helped you to understand a slightly difficult topic named fronts and now you have a fair idea about stationary front cold front warm front and occluded front with this we have arrived at our destination subscribe the channel for more such informative videos on aviation do not forget to comment below about how did you like the video or if you want me to cover a specific topic so hope to see you on board again for the next flight and till then happy landings